Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us um, today as we talk about the butterfly effect of volunteerism. Um, we will be starting in a few minutes. Uh, we'll just wait uh, for a couple more minutes for more people to join, and then we'll start right off. So today we're going to be talking to two amazing people in the volunteering space. Um, we're going to talk to Mirabel Mora and we're going to talk to Sani Mohammed. I'll tell you a little bit more about them uh, as we go along. I'm really excited to hear their story. I'm excited to hear what led them, first of all, into volunteering and the difference it's made for them and where we have gotten to so far thanks to volunteering. And we'll talk a little bit also about the butterfly effect, because I'm sure for some of us, we read that butterfly effect and we're like, what's that about? So we'll talk a bit about the butterfly effect and what it means and the idea it conjures up. All right. Okay, so it's 12.05, so we'll start. 
Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Tofe Adinjimo and I work for the Jumper Man Youth Engagement Team, uh, focusing on learning and development. A little bit about Jumper Man. Jumper Man is the number one uh, online recruitment platform in Nigeria. We have over 2 million candidates and over 60,000 employers on our platform. So if you're looking for a job in these trialing times, this is the place to be. Uh, Job of My Youth Engagement is the team bringing you this event, and we're committed to upskilling 5 million young people and placing 3 million of them in dignified work over the next five years. And to reach this goal, we provide a free soft skills training, which allows to equip you with the skills to not just make you right for the job, but make you be picked to actually do the job. Um, about Superman Soft Skills Training, it's online. You can use this link to sign up. Uh, we'll post the link as well in the chat for anybody who wants to sign up for the training who hasn't. And you can take it on three different platforms. You can take it on Coursera. You can take it on Thinkific. For those who might have issues with uh, access to data, you can take it on Telegram. All of it is high top-notch training, and you will be us at any point in time with Awesome help, interactive sessions, learning as much as you can, immersing yourself in soft skills um, to succeed on the job right now, such as emotion. About the effects of volunteerism. And before we do that, let's have a bit of an understanding of what volunteerism for me. Remember, I said I just started, um, just wanted to be part of a community and just had this opportunity to be part of a volunteer program. And that opened up a lot of opportunities for me. Uh, the most important thing that volunteers, uh, volunteerism has opened for me is my network. I have friends I have kept for life, friends like Mirabel Mora. Interestingly, myself and Mirabel Mora are part of, uh, we're part of a United States uh, exchange program, sort of the US Institute of California, where we spent six weeks um, learning a lot about social entrepreneurship. And that really brought, brought me uh, to know Mirabel better. Mirabel serves as a board of trustee on my organization. And Mirabel is someone I can always run to for anything, anything communications, anything, anything posh is Mirabel. Like Mirabel is the best person to go to. And she gives, Mirabel is that, I feel she's that kind of person who makes us see what really the butterfly effect of volunteerism is. As very young age, look at what she has accomplished. I bet you people who are 50 years living in Nigeria have not even been as close to what Mirabel has gone to, all the rooms she has been in. And it was volunteerism that opened those opportunities. So when I started my COCO program, um, it was just purely volunteering for about two, three years, doing a lot of things on gender equality, organizing campaigns against rape and sexual and gender-based violence. And that led me into serious learning. So I, it opened my horizon to learn more about these issues, about feminism. I was reading more about these issues. I wanted to understand it more. It opened up me up to this community of supportive people who really wanted to see women and girls thrive and as well our society. So when I started, um, I, I became very popular in my school then. And I was part of the SUG. I was a first class student, so I was very popular. But it wasn't because of I was a first class student that all these opportunities were coming. It was because of I was doing something that people could connect to, people could relate to. And that led me into SUSI. I was recommended to be part of SUSI. I went for SUSI. I came back. I got into the one campaign in Nigeria. I got, I, I left. My, I left Kano, I went to Ilorin to volunteer for three months in a community to help students get quality and relevant education uh, in rural communities in Ilorin through the International Citizen Service Program. From there on, I started Bridge Connect. Like everything, it just kept happening. And I was opportunity to be part of um, the young people who sat in a room with 
the one global leadership circle and and the one the members of the one one campaign board and these are powerful people these are people who served in the obama's administration uh people who are billionaires globally and uh, for the first time i've always had the dream of going to an ivy league university and here i was standing in the faculty uh, at stanford university and all these important people i never thought i would meet were clapping and saying sunny you are doing an amazing work and and i think the chairman the president of the one of the people i admire uh, very well the president of um ashoka that ashoka all came to me and was like sunny i need to get your card <laughs> i'm like who is this sunny from one rural community in northern nigeria and and so volunteerism just opens up this huge opportunity for you. You don't know where it's taking you to, but it's definitely taking you to a journey that you will forever appreciate. And it's not just about the opportunities that has opened up for me. It is about the lives I've been able to impact. The people that come up to me and say, Sunny, thank you for coming to us at the right time. Because of you, I cannot move ahead with my life. I know things better. My marriage is better. I left an unhealthy relationship. I left an abusive relationship. Yeah. So all of those things are really things that I look back to and I feel if not for that one opportunity I had to be on this volunteer program, I will not be where I am today. And that's opened so much opportunities that I now have people who also work for me and who are also taking the path that I have taken. So yes, um, the butterfly effect is massive. That's such an amazing um story thank you for sharing sunny uh, so mirabel i would like you to focusing on the butterfly effect think about what are the benefits of volunteering to the society at large sunny has gone a lot into the benefits for an individual just you growing as a person you growing your network getting to meet a lot of people you know people getting to know your name and you even inspiring others to follow in your footsteps uh, so what are the benefits to society for what volunteers actually do for the butterfly effect of volunteering? All right, thank you. Sunny, I, I didn't know you were into relationship counseling. I, this one I'm just <laughs> discovering about you. I need to come to you. <laughs> I mean, Sunny, Sunny has said so much and I, I just kept laughing. Um, the benefits of volunteering are just enormous. Like, you, they're just enormous. First off, you get to learn something that school doesn't teach you. You get to learn skills outside of school, things that school don't teach you. And when you learn things outside of school, you let you learn really valuable skills. Then you become, you just don't become someone that is a liability to your society. You become someone who is useful to your society. And just to shed more light on what Sunny was saying and how I met Sunny, I remember that I volunteered for Technovation Challenge in Calabar. And I had called, I don't know if you know OpportunityDesk.org, it's one of the world's largest sites for opportunities. And I know that the founder of Opportunity, Opportunity Desk was the one who was running um, Technovation for Calabar. So I reached out to her and said, you know what, like, can I, can I volunteer for you? Can I volunteer at this thing? And uh, she probably said, I don't know how it happened, but one day she just called me and then she said, me about how old are you? And I was like, I'm 19. And she's like, okay, I want you to, I want to nominate you for something. Just X, Y, Z. You have just a few more days to complete it. And she was nominating me to like, it was some, she was nominating me to go to the U S and study. And I was like, what? It's just because I volunteered. It's just because she saw me doing something. And I was just doing something because you know it's, it's like when you find people see as a man that's diligent before his work he will stand before kings and not mere men all the people that people discover doing great things they're always working when you see them when people recognize them they're always working so you know when you volunteer when you volunteer you learn things school cannot teach you and the second benefit is are the people that you meet like sunny said he was meeting billionaires and all of these people, even I myself, you know, I was, I remember going to the U.S. Department of State and saying, ah, ah, see this place we have me from Calabar Hill, like, how did I get here? You know, just meeting so many people that you never thought that you would, you would ever, ever meet. And so it just opens you up to that network of people. And it doesn't just come automatically. You have to be the one who would nurture those relationships. You know, it's not just, I meet someone at this event. Um, Many times you meet people at an event and you don't even know who they are, but because you just made friends with them, then as you're not sure that friendship, they, you begin to see 
new opportunities that they just become they just start recommending you for things and the third benefit is that you also get to discover yourself so while your friends in school or even if you're not in school but while you're still let's just choose as an undergraduate while your your friends are still submitting assignments you you're also submitting your assignment but you're like a step ahead you are not just submitting assignments but you're practically practicing what you've learned in school outside of school and if you're lucky enough where you where you get to volunteer you can actually get paid some stipends so it's not just like you're learning and working but you're earning and learning and working at the same time and it's like a triple or something so i know that when i was done with my final year like when i just dropped my pen for my final year exams um there was this internship in salzburg austria and then i saw it and i was like I want to apply for this internship and so i put in my application a day before the deadline and i went through all the motions of they said they were only they said they were only accepting graduates so me i said hey, i finished my final exam i've not gotten my <laughs> I'm, a graduate. <laughs> I'm a graduate yeah and you know and they really wanted only graduates so um, I, I applied for everything and you know I became the first Nigerian who was ever accepted into that internship program it's a very prestigious program that and the organization has probably been running for like 75 years or so in Austria and how was I eligible to get into that program because while I was in school while I was missing some classes god help me I, I was missing some classes but you know I was I was doing things for other people volunteering at TEDx volunteering at um people's events so you know you you get to understand yourself you get to also build skills that could give you jobs at the end of the day when you graduate or you can build something yourself you can become an entrepreneur so one it improves your skills to the people you meet the network you just increase your network thirdly uh, you get to understand yourself better the more you work for people you understand your emotions and how what kind of leader you are what kind of person you are and you know it could Fourthly, it could lead you to a better paying job when you apply via job or month or something. I mean, this has been amazing. First of all, Miracle is not saying Miss Class, so please go to class and finish well. <laughs> please go to class, so go to class. Go to class, because you still need to graduate well. You can still graduate to the first class like Sani while also volunteering. So some of the things they've mentioned is with volunteering, you just need to put yourself out there. Look for something like Sani looked for something he was sort of interested in and curious about. And he sort of wanted to be the first man to do something that most people are just like, oh, that's a woman's fight, especially in the North. And just key into it. It's about putting yourself out there. I think that's the biggest thing um, I heard from both of you is you just need to put yourself out there. If you see an opportunity to give of yourself, do that. And you need to be open to give of yourself. Uh, Mirabel has spoken about the fact that there are some opportunities that they might even pay you a stipend, but that doesn't always happen. So I, you know, one of the things I know about Nigerians, you know, Nigerians, we don't like to work for free. And even our companies don't really like to hire for free because if I'm hiring for free, what's the quality of what I'm getting or this person will not be loyal to me. But the truth is, you know, like you said, volunteering is so important. And one of the things, I mean, that we all learn in life, and I generally even tell people that sometimes start with these things from a selfish perspective. Start with thinking about yourself. What can I gain from this experience? What can I gain from this opportunity? What can I get from putting myself out there? And sometimes when you start from that selfish perspective, you put yourself out there to do something for yourself. But then with the butterfly effect, you end up changing lives. You end up impacting other people. You end up starting something that no one else thought about. You end up getting opportunities that no one else would have tried for. You end up putting, it also gives you the courage, like Maribel said, to apply for something that Yes, she had not gotten her certificate per se, but in fairness, she was a graduate because she had finished her final year exams. You know, so those are the things that you have to think about when it comes to volunteering. And someone asked in the chat that how does one volunteer to do meaningful tasks? And I was going to get to that as well. Like, how do you get to the point where you're volunteering and you actually feel like you're making a difference? Not just volunteering and they're telling you, oh, print this, go and share this paper out or do this, do that, but volunteering where you feel like, okay, I'm doing meaningful tasks, I'm making a difference, I'm impacting the work that is being done right now. So Mirabel, I'll start with you on that. Great, well, if you are asked to be a cleaner, please be the best cleaner that you can be, because, I mean, so you have to start from somewhere, mm -hmm. and 
you know you the, the when you start seeing yourself in a of course you have a vision of where you want to be but if someone said you know uh you need to fill all these papers if you start saying no i don't want to fill all these papers i want to be the manager you begin to have this kind of attitude that you're you you seem proud like you don't want to do your job and that's where the whole thing about um interns interns are feeling big and they don't want to bring mm -hmm. humble themselves and do the work that was given to them you don't know people are watching you people are watching you and just these small tiny things you're doing see i was when i said i said at tedx i was giving people name tag -o. i was not talking on this i was giving people name tag giving people name tag and i was handling their communications on uh, social media i paid to attend that program but i ended up being a volunteer you know, it's just name tag and that that seems like a a a, a task that an usher should be doing or something. But if you're given any task, be excellent at it. Step step by step. You, you get to be Sorry, Mirabel, one second. No, that's why I think I'm done. So whatever task you're given, be excellent at it. Whether you're a cleaner or a, or a bookkeeper, just be excellent at it and um, have the vision of where you want to be. And please, if you have any questions, just post it in the chat. Um, I agree with you. It's that idea of not being, um, don't despise your days of small beginnings. That's something my mom always told me. It's like you said, even if they just ask you to be a cleaner, if they tell you to give name tag be the best name tag giver there just also another way to make yourself move forward to do meaningful tasks and i think this is another way for organizations to even start appreciating volunteers as well is look for where there are gaps and where you can feel where people need help i think that's something people are scared about they're like oh, they put me here i'll stay here but look for opportunities to just be like, oh, I noticed this. Can I help with this? I finished my actual task, but can I help with this? Or even someone just seeing that, oh, they're telling her to file papers, but the way she's filing papers is different from the way anybody has ever filed papers in their life. You know, she's thinking further ahead than ever. She's looking at how can I do it in such a way that when I leave, it's still a process they can keep going on with. So even to start volunteering, just start somewhere start somewhere look for a gap and put yourself in so i think another question that i wanted to ask and i think it's very important for our um for our listeners here is what are the best volunteering opportunities for undergrads job seekers especially what are some of the either sites or organizations they can go to who will happily you know take people on what are some volunteering opportunities you can kind of do remotely especially with covid now and things like that so Sunny, what would you, what are some of the volunteering opportunities out there that people can tap into right now? Yeah, so volunteerism, as I said earlier, it's, it should be based on what you think you can do best and uh, what you are willing to offer when you volunteer. Uh, so for me, uh, Mirabel mentioned Opportunity Hub. <clears throat> so anytime anybody tells me about volunteering, I know anything that Opportunity Hub puts out there is usually a meaningful engagement. So I would advise you, a lot of young people, okay, go on, go on Opportunity Dex, go on um, YouTube Africa um, Opportunities um, website, because these are places you can see and get opportunities to volunteer on various stuff, conferences, um, you could get awards, seminars, like these are a lot of, this is a platform that has created many opportunities for a lot of young people. Um, for, for you to get um, the best out of volunteerism or for you to know we, the best volunteering job for under, undergraduate, basically, I think it starts anywhere, anywhere you're passionate about. It could be really in the church. It could be just part of the choir and you don't know if your calling is to be a pastor and they recognize you that this is your best skill and people get to mentor you through that so volunteerism is not really i don't want us to think volunteerism within a space of just a corporate life yeah. right it could be that simple thing that you love how to do it could be just going to a community to do something it could be going to uh working to a company and telling them please you work on scrap computers i want to help you open up these computers before they go for so just investing your time 
is something you are passionate about, something that has what, we, what I call shared value. Because volunteerism, you're not just giving, right? You're also getting, and, and that is one of the important things about volunteerism. You, are, you shouldn't always be at that, um, uh, at that point where you are only, where you are either only receiving or only giving. It's something of shared value, something that has to do with uh, what, I use, what I call meaningful engagement. So wherever place you think you'll be meaningfully engaged, please go for it. And it could be from your church, it could be from your mosque, it could be from your student association, it could be from, um, like I was, I, was in, I was involved in my departmental politics, I was involved in my faculty politics, I was involved in the school's politics, but I was still doing a lot of all these other jobs. When I started NYSC, I was the president of the Charity Agendas Club, and it was, they were all volunteer positions. So anywhere I find that, I will be meaningfully engaged. I try to put myself in it. And, and up to now, I am serving on the International Conference of Family Planning uh, Subcommittee and as the co-chair of SEFIN Technical Committee. And they are all, nobody's paying me for them. They are all volunteer opportunities, but they are taking me to tables that I would rather not be if I was sitting down and trying to look for a paid work. So where as an undergraduate, you would find the best volunteer opportunities is the closest place within your community. Then go online, look at places like Opportunity Hub. Even Jobberman provides a lot of these opportunities, in fact, paid ones. If you go and sign up on Jobberman's website, like a lot of young people I meet today, if you come and tell me that you don't have a job, I'll tell you, go and, go and take this off since training. If you don't have a job in three months, it's your fault then. But after the soft skill training, you shouldn't be, because it's basically all these skills. Um, uh, because what voluntary does to you is to actually practicalize the aspect of these soft skills that Jobberman is currently teaching. Time management, um, uh, how do you manage stress, how do you become more productive, personal effectiveness. Like these are things that, these are the values volunteering brings to you. Imagine going to volunteer with a certificate that says you're already a soft skills person. It gives you that edge to be not treated just as a volunteer, but also as an expert. It makes you to be meaningfully engaged. And sorry to say, a lot of times when you are the volunteer that is always called upon, it means you are doing something amazing. <laughs> Don't think anybody is stressing your life. It's because they think you are the best man that will yeah. get that job. Yeah. That is how it is everywhere. That is how it is everywhere. So to everybody watching this, I would encourage you, if you haven't started volunteering yet, the first place you want to be is go to Jobberman's uh, website, check for the soft skills training, and I bet you in one month, you, your life will not remain the same. After you get that certificate, go on Opportunities Dex and look at these thousands of opportunities that would help you get into spaces you've never imagined. For me, these are, these are some of the things I've been telling a lot of people in the past few months. Uh, all my staff and all my brothers have all taken the soft skills training. Less. You have to be part of it. Um, so for me, when you want to volunteer or when you're looking for volunteer opportunities, you need to think about what you're offering. And a lot of times, what a lot of us start with is usually our soft skill. We don't know the technical part of these jobs. We don't know. It's just, oh, Sunny can do this. Sunny can do that. Sunny is available for this. If you give Sunny this, Sunny this job, he will be able to. And that is even how when you come to the top corporate world, that is how people recommend. People be like, oh, I have worked with this guy and he's always this, this, and that. Simple. Someone will say, this guy does not always respond to my email, so I don't think he will be much available for this. So those little soft skills are what make you either a good or a bad volunteer. So the, the, for you to be meaningfully engaged, you need to also be bringing something meaningful to the table. So for me, uh, it's about meaningful engagement. Look for where you'll be involved in a participatory program of the, of the whole. And uh, that is what Jobberman does with his volunteers. I mean, volunteers organize, they do the pedagogy on Telegram, they organize the trainings, they organize uh, Q&A sessions. Like, it's giving young people ownership to own the program. And, and this is, when we talk about meaningfully engaging young people, that I, when I met Rihanna, Rihanna was not doing um, 
Rihanna was not doing uh, graphics, but Rihanna is right now teaching volunteers how to do graphics. This is meaningful engagement, right? So, so I think you need to be able, you need to be willing to come with it, with an open mindset to learn and to also give. And I think for me that is that is what will open up the opportunities for you to volunteer. Go take the job and soft skills training and go on opportunity decks. And I'm telling you, you'll find a lot of opportunities that will prepare you for volunteerism. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sunny. That was a very passionate plea for your mama. I'm not even going to say anything about it again. It's definitely true about you have to put yourself out there. Um, David Oluwatosi, I saw your message about you regretted not volunteering earlier, and now you want to try and do it, but you're married and you need to take your marriage into consideration. I'm sure Sunny will agree with me with this, that sometimes maybe the best way is for you and your wife or husband to volunteer together find something you can do together sunny kept giving the example of for example in church because if you think about volunteerism you're right everybody thinks about oh, the corporate world i want someone to notice me but even within whichever community you find yourself there is someone that will notice you there and they can move you from even the your church your mosque wherever whichever little community you are in your estate um um, estates as school, I think is what they call them, you know, your estate executive committee, and move you even into the corporate world. So look for opportunities of either volunteering with your partner or look for opportunities that, like I said, remote volunteering that don't take you out, maybe out of the house per se, or something you can do like Mirabel was sharing about the fact that she helps with communication, social media. That's something she doesn't have to be face to face with the people. She just has to deal with it online. So those are things to think about. And thank you everybody who is sharing different um, volunteering platforms that people can sign up for. I think just a final question, Mirabel. It's people keep asking, you know, how can one be part of a volunteering? Team. Is there any qualifications I need to have? What do I need to have? You know, what are the qualities required? What would make me attractive to people? I know we've been telling them that just put yourself out there, but are there specific things that will help them, especially as a communication specialist like you, that will help bring you to the forefront of the powers that be, even in the volunteering world or wherever you find yourself? Thank you. And for, for many of us who are, you know, who are married, Sunny is a married man, so he has a very, he has plenty of experience with marriage <laughs> and uh, volunteering. <laughs> That's in case you did advice there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so to answer the question, I mean, I just saw someone's comments that says, um, Ibuka says he used to volunteer for his church and now he's employed by his church. That's a very great example. And um, do you need any skills? Like Sunny said, you don't need to volunteer somewhere big. Just start small with the small events, the mosque around you, church around you. If it's a, if it's your neighbor or something, organizing a small thing, just start with them. And are there specific skills that you need? It all depends on the kind of job that you want to volunteer at. If you, if say you, you say you read uh, engineering and you want or let's say you read it some kind of it and you have some tech skills and you know you want to do some volunteering why not look for let's say an organize an organization that's hosting an event say hey you know this are what this is what i do um and i'd love to join you guys and uh, handle some of your IT, these things here and there, uh, just for one day, you don't need to pay me. I'm happy. You know, people people need help in this life. Oh. You've seen organizations that you be thinking they don't need help. They need help. And for someone or some other person said on the chat that, you know, organizations don't accept them. Well, I think you could ask for feedback. Whenever I, re I receive a, a rejection email from a job I'm trying to apply for, I ask them for feedback. I say, thank you for rejecting me. Is there any feedback you have? Uh, sometimes they won't reply you. Sometimes they will and say, uh, we actually need someone with 10 years experience. Well, hello. Or we need someone with um, <laughs> XYZ experience. And then you look at yourself and be like, okay, maybe I need to work on this experience that they're talking about. Um, and also, if you... you, you you just you just need to have the particular interest number one passion number two selfish interest number three um and some kind of inclination towards that particular area that you want to volunteer at and you also need a lot of soft skills when you're starting mm -hmm. off first one are you integrous like do you have integrity are you the kind of volunteer who will just come and um first of all these people don't know you 
can they trust you? Before you come and carry their money and run away, if you're working physically in the accounts department or something else, you know, and um, do, are you integrious? People would always recommend you, like Sani said, people would always recommend you to different people. If they see that you're a person who has integrity, passion, if they see that you, and many organizations might actually want to hire for cult, uh, not culture, for to their value system. That means that you, you share the same values and passions that they have. Maybe you don't need to have the soft skill, the hard skills, but rather they're willing to train you if you have those particular um, value systems and soft skills they're looking for. And, you know, when, when Sunny was asking me to be a part of his board some years ago, you know, I said, I know that Sunny and I both went, both attended the same uh, study of the U.S. Institute at California State University, but we didn't go the same year. I, Sunny went before me and I went the next year. And so I, I reached out to somebody and said, you know, this guy Sunny is asking me to be on his board. What do you think about Sunny? Why is he asking me to be on his board? And then the person said, the person actually vouched for Sunny and said, you know, Sunny, Sunny is a great guy. Sunny probably trusts you a lot. And I was like, yeah, okay really okay and then you know that's this was someone in california who was telling me something about sunny who was in nigeria and this is how fast sunny's integrity goes because like your continents are part your seas are part and someone's recommending you and people see what you're doing so whether you're doing a very small thing um or a big thing have that integrity you know have that passion stay open and willing to learn be able to take feedback um and also be able to network with people because all of these things you can't just go and volunteer at a big event like tedx and expect that okay because i've volunteered here wow doors will open for me wow which doors no door will open because you didn't you did not show the relationship so if you met like it's two speakers you know collect their email addresses follow them up say hi follow them on social media not show those relationships like they're your babies you know say hi to them how can i help you you know xyz you just network with people the more you network with people the more value you also try to bring to your network i remember that i used to i used to tell people during my december break in school i used to email a couple of people and say hi i'm free in december from december 23rd to january 17th do you have any job by your organization that i want that you need help with in terms of communication and this and this and they'd be like yeah 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 you know they they have they need help in xyz so i jump on their team and then volunteer for them um because i asked and because somehow they they saw my past work and track record in the past um so just have the passion and the energy and the zeal to want to learn something you'd be willing to take feedback in, increase your network of people by attending events that you meet like-minded people and there's a lot my thing about my needs to organize part two of this whole thing um honestly i really yeah. think you might need to organize part two maybe not just the butterfly effect but the hawk effect, the equal effect of us, because this is big. And I think the next part will focus more on the network you get to build. Because uh, I think that's a very important point that you want to I know Mirabel will soon have to come up with another uh, because she has another meeting to attend. But, you know, I want to thank both of you for joining us today because honestly, in this 45, 50 minutes conversation, there's been a lot that has been dropped. Uh, one of the first things I remember from the beginning was surround yourself with people who are going to push you to be better. Surround yourself with people who are going to push you to do something different, to push you to make an impact, people who build your confidence. That's part of what volunteering also helps you do. It builds your confidence because if you're the person who is scared to step out there, just start somewhere. And like Sani also said, don't be scared when people start suggesting you for things when you're volunteering. Don't be worried when people start saying, oh, this is the best. No, go and talk to Rihanna. Rihanna is the best person to talk to. Don't be scared to hear that. Rather, you know, embrace it because it's an opportunity to make a difference. It's a, it shows that your work is being counted for something. And if you just start and do well, like Mirabel said, the, even if they tell you clean, clean as if you know, they are paying you $2 million to do that cleaning. Clean with the best of your ability. Do everything, every task they ask you to do to the best of your ability. And then you get the opportunity to start doing more meaningful tasks. For all you know, that cleaning actually makes a difference. 
I know we might take it as, oh, what does the cleaning do? But that's one less thing anybody has to focus on. And then they can focus on the bigger things they are doing. And depending on what the volunteer work is, if, for example, they say, oh, please help us clean the hall where the event is going to happen. If you don't clean the hall, that's going to affect the event. So don't look at any task as literally a thing. And find your passion. Find what is it that you are so passionate about. Find what is your interest. What's that thing that, hmm, it would be interesting if I take, I, I want to learn more about that. That's what pushed Sani into the women's initiatives that he has now. Is that he just was like, I'm interested to find out more. And then why are more men not talking about this situation? And now he's a feminist as a man, <laughs> you know, and he's making such a big difference. And he's also met such amazing people. He's on uh, tables that he never would have been at before. And he's making power moves on his team. So volunteerism is definitely a big thing. And like um, Sunny and Mirabel said, you know, there's a butterfly effect. You start to do something small and it can make a huge impact, not just to yourself, but also to the society at large. Um, so if anybody has any more questions, uh, while Sunny is still here, Mirabel is here for a bit too. Uh, if you have any questions, just one more time, drop them in the chat. But definitely, like Mirabel has said, we have to do a part two. And Jobama will make sure that we do that sooner rather than later. We can talk more about the network uh, that volunteering can help you do and more about some of the impacts that you can make in the spaces where you volunteer. All right. Thank you all so, so much for joining us now. I want to thank Mirabel once again, Mirabel Mora, thank Sani Mohammed for joining us today to talk to us about this very important topic and for, to help us promote the importance of volunteerism because it's something that is rarely ever really promoted that much in nigeria it's something we need to start doing especially when you want more opportunities more opportunities to you know get out there meet more people get experience because that's the biggest thing job and youth engagement is involved in we are all about experience all about experience you want to get experience volunteering is one of the biggest ways one of the biggest ways um, you can get experience and we have such amazing inspiration now people like Mirabel and Sunny. Mirabel started when she was 18, 19. She was still in her first year of university. She just reached out to someone out of the group that, hey, I saw you are doing this. I'm kind of interested. Let me just try. And from that, they said, you know, offering her so many different things. So just step out of your comfort zone once in a while and make a difference in the community you find yourself. Thank you once again for joining us here today. Um, I look forward to part two as well, and I will see you there and there. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Bye.